Good afternoon and welcome to the seventh meeting of the Honolulu Liquor Commission. Uh, commissioners, I see that we have some minutes for consideration. Motion to approve the minutes of the first and third meetings as previously circulated. Second. I move and second to approve the minutes of the first and third meetings as previously circulated. Any objections or reservations? Hearing none, <coughs> also vote aye. The minutes are approved. Uh, moving in to the special license applications, calling agenda item number one, application number 23-00224 from Park Event Services, LLC. Thank you very much. Mr. Uh, Nicoba. Thank you. Vice Chairs, uh, Devin Nicoba, representing Park Services, LLC. Also seated to my right, Mr. J. Park, P-A-R-K, with uh, Park Event Services, LLC. Good afternoon, gentlemen. All right, so this is for the TPN concert, correct? Yes, ma'am. Oh, I know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, commissioners. I don't know. Oh, um, <laughs> <laughs> walk us through the event, and, and in particular, I want to hear security plans, making sure minors don't um, are not served, and what you guys are going to do to prevent overconsumption. Um, so the event is next Saturday uh, from um, 6 to 10.30 at Aloha Tower, the main stage. We're anticipating a crowd of about 4,500 cap. Uh, the show is actually sold out already, so we are not selling any more tickets. Uh, the, uh, it's a co-op with HPU, so it's in celebration of their uh, of coming back to school. Um, HPU students are allowed at the, uh, at the event, but they have their own section and there's a six foot separation between the, uh, the underage or the HPU section and the, uh, the overs. Uh, we have security posted at every point. Uh, we have uh, RAID security, uh, 40 plus uh, private security, and then we also have uh, 10 plus special duties uh, that are moving at the event. Um, one of overs will have a special wristband uh, and the security posted at every entry point and uh, exit point in the uh, 21 and over section, as well as the HPU section. Um, it is not, unders are not being allowed from the general public. Again, it's strictly, if you're an HPU student and you're, 18, you're over 18, you're allowed with, a, with a, uh, in that HPU section. Uh, but there's a strict in and out uh, on that, and uh, we'll be having rovers that are make sure that the, there's no underage drinking as well. As well as the same, we'll have rovers that uh, watch out for overconsumption as well. On the, on the That's very helpful. Um, one question on your exhibit A, the diagram. There's a reference to a family area, but I don't see it on the diagram. Is that the same as the HPU study That's the area? HPU section. That would be the HPU section. Okay, that's helpful. Thank you. Any other questions, commissioners? Hearing none, motion to approve application number 23-00224. Second. We move and second to approve application number 23-00224. Uh, any objections or reservations? Hearing none, I also vote aye. Motion is carried. Application is approved. Thank you very much. Thank you. Agenda item number two, applications number 23-00277-1 through 23-00277-10 inclusive from TS Grass Inc. DBA Kraken Kitchen. Mr. Hu. Hey, thank you, Madam Vice Chair, Commission members. Kenneth Hu appearing for the applicant. To my right is G Suzuki, S-U-Z-U-K-I. She's the principal of the applicant. This is a special license application for a period beginning August 22nd uh, at the former site of the Golden Bay restaurant in International Marketplace. It, it is a restaurant and it will be operated as a restaurant. It's fully contained uh, with, uh, they'll have employees and managers servicing the area to make sure there's no liquor violations. What kind of restaurant is it? Hawaiian Cuisine Seafood Royal. Okay. Questions, motion to approve applications number 23-00277-1 through 
2022-00277-10. Thank you. We move and second it to approve applications listed in agenda item two. We have objective okay. reservations. Hearing none, I also vote aye. Motion is carried. Applications are approved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Preliminary hearings calling agenda item number three, application number 22-24448 from the Cafe Pin. CBA Rock and Rolls. Uh, Madam Chair, before we proceed to this matter, please let the record reflect that I must recuse myself from this matter due to a potential conflict of interest. Thank you, Commissioner. We will need, because we lack quorum, we'll need to move destiny on the, on the agenda. Um, and when Commissioner and I volunteer can come in, if not, we might need to continue this if that comes. So we'll move this to the end. <clears throat> Temporary license applications calling agenda item number four, application number 22-24952 from Fishler Enterprises LLC, DBA Fishler Enterprises. Mr. Luke. Good afternoon. To my right is Anthony Fishler, the owner and uh, member of the LLC. The last name is spelled F I S C H L E R. Uh, and I reckon it's like we need a constant. We have no changes to the investigators' report. Um, if this application is granted, we would request that the date, starting date be September 15, 2022. And this is that uh, former Gordon Biersch down at Aloha Tower? That's correct. Is your restaurant or what's the business model? Uh, the business is going to be a Mexican restaurant with fusion of Hawaiian flavors. It's going to be very high end tomahawk steaks, that kind of thing. Uh, but very kind of Mexico City versus tacos and burritos. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, motion to approve. Application number 22-24952 with a starting date of September 15, 2022. Second. We move and second it to approve application number 22-24952 with the effective date of <clears throat> September 15, 2022. Any objections or reservations? Hearing none, I also vote aye. Motion is carried. Application is approved. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Thank you. you. Thank you. All right, moving into caterer license applications, calling agenda item number five, application number 23-00189 from Sodexo America. Mr. Baugh. Good evening, Commission Patrick Baugh, uh, General Manager and Authorized Agent for Sodexo. This application is for the Hawaii Finest Concerts. Two dates, it's the 26th and the 27th, both days, same format, um, 6 p.m. gates. Uh, we'll close down bars around 9, 9, 15 in the show at 10 there's three acts each night and um both of them have ticket sales in about the 2500 range we expect it to be about 3500 or a little less than 4000 probably for both nights as it gets closer hearing him okay yeah we can hear okay him. well you're coming in a little garbled but i think we we're able to hear what you said in the future you might want to appear in Person. We are trying to um, get back to pre COVID in person hearings at some point. Okay. Uh, yeah, I today have I have a. a I, okay, go ahead. Sorry. I do have one question, and this has to do with the exhibit A. It seems like a little contradiction. So the type of drinks is described as bottled water and soda, beer, wine, mixed drink spirits. Type of container states branded disposable cups. Um, what what is the actual containers that the uh, beverages will be served in? So we we we've, we've gone back and forth on a couple ones, and I apologize. I'll double check the. Um, so when we do draft beers, um, we we've been doing draft. Everything gets poured in cups, um, branded logo cups, or the eco disposable, you know, for the cocktails and stuff. We also have been going though, um, like the Jack Johnson, other ones we had 
um, the canned mixed cocktails and we've had those for various events and stuff like that. So it's a little bit of both, to be honest. Um, part of it's just trying to be able to use the inventory we have, but we can also pour the canned product into the disposable cups if that's a concern. Are you folks using any glass bottles or any glass uh, containers? No, we don't use glass. In this show, we don't allow, this one we're not going to allow um, hydro flask or any of those containers. Um, that's our not our normal standard, but yeah, we do not use glass. We don't use glass um, for any general public um, events or any of those. So it is disposable, you know, products or it is disposable, you know, aluminum cans, you know, the mixed cocktails that come in cans. Thank you. So other questions? to approve application number 23-00189. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve application number 23-00189. Any objections or reservations? Hearing none, I also vote aye. Motion is carried. Application is approved. Thank you, Mr. Ball. Um, Thank you, Commissioner. also has number nine. Oh, yeah, we can yeah. take that out of order. I'm sorry. Uh, calling agenda item number nine, request number 23-00341 from Sodexo America LLC. Uh, thank you for commission for taking out of order. Again, Patrick Baugh, general manager and authorized agent. So this is a request to extend our license area, the baseball license to extend onto the gym field to accommodate the UH football. Um, it is what we did last year. Um, it's the same footprint, again, beer and wine only. Uh, there's no re entry to the event, so it's enter only. Um, everything's contained within the fence line and the baseball perimeter. Uh, we do have HVD campus security, private security, and Sodexo security on site. Um, we have designated the student section as a high risk area, so we have multiple security staff watching it at the entry points and within the stand, and that's kind of where we're at with um, the setup and the plan. the summary uh, uh, you mentioned you had done this previously were there any issues previously with this event the way it's structured the only event where we've been on ching field where we actually were able to sell was the spring football game this spring we had about 5200 um we had one underage that we um caught at the point and extended we had two that i believe we expelled for bringing in their own alcohol but there was no intoxications or other issues that we had at that event it's a little bit more family friendly um this one is a regular uh football game so um you know we expect that kind of crowd where there are, are going to be you know the student section and stuff um capacity is limited to 9400 currently um so it is a smaller section than it would be have been at the stadium area those there's only going to be about a thousand tickets for students Well, before I make my motion, plan on coming in person next time you have an application, okay? Only because I'll do my best. I, I'll do my best. I was trying to today. I just I have a 350 person catering that's happening for the Goodwill with the marathon. So I apologize. I couldn't make it. Okay. I mean, to the extent you can, we'd appreciate that. Uh, motion to approve request number 23 00341. Second. Then move and second it to approve request number 23 00341. Any objections or reservations? Hearing none, I also vote aye. Motion is carried. A request is granted. Mr. Bow. Go Bows. Thank you, Commission. I appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> going back in order, uh, moving on to agenda item number six. Application number 22-24144 from Waikai Wave LLC DBA Waikai Lagoon Excursions. Mr. Hu. Thank you, Madam Vice Chair and Commission members. Kenneth Hu appearing for the applicant. Appearing virtually is Larry Castor. He's the Director of Retail Development for the applicant. Um, before I comment on the conclusion of the investigator in the report, just want to make one correction that's on page three of the report first paragraph titled details of vessel the last sentence of that states that the main deck has a stairway to the upper deck at the rear of the vessel 
Um, this is incorrect because this there is no upper deck on this boat. And if you look at the the diagram uh, that are in attached to the report, you see that there is just a kind of single deck. Mm. So that's that's the correction. Um, with regard to the investigators. Um, Opinion uh, basically he's saying he's not clear whether what requirements need to be met with regard to registration of the boat. I think it's pretty clear that because of the, the, the boat and where it's going to be used in private waters in Waikai Lagoon, there are no Coast Guard requirements. However, there is a question about whether the boat needs, and it's a 21 feet, foot boat. Needs to and battery operated needs to be registered with the Department of Land and Natural Res uh, Resources as department as a undocumented boat uh, pursuant to uh, I think it's HRS two hundred. So it is our intention to register the boat with the DLNR to, to get that regist registration and the number to, to clear up any question with regard to that. But so, I think the investigator is saying waters of the state. If you're in and if you're going to operate the boat in the waters of the state, you got to get this DLNR registration. And he doesn't know whether or not a private lagoon is considered waters of the state. So we're going to kind of step over that by saying that we will get it registered with the DLNR. Okay. And, uh, <clears throat> I have some background with Admiralty Maritime Law. This is, <clears throat> I've never seen something like this, very unusual request, Mr. Hu. One question I have, and I don't know the answer to this, is if you register with the DLNR, is there an annual inspection of the vessel? I understand there's an annual registration. Uh, and I'm not clear as to what uh, that entails. So the concern I have is if, Obviously, I don't I agree with you. I don't think the Coast Guard has jurisdiction and I don't think you need to register with the Coast Guard. But what kind of assurance do we have that there would be a captain or an operator that has sufficient training and skill to operate the vessel? Two, um, is there gonna be life vests on the vessel? Three, how do we know it's seaworthy and not just now, but three years from now, five years from now? So those are my concerns. Sure. Uh, Mr. Cassidy, you wanna address those before I do? Yes, um, first of all, from a safety standpoint, we have a very rigorous safety plan for all um, activities on the lagoon. Um, we will have trained personnel that will be operating this vessel uh, for these excursions. This is not, this is not a boat that, uh, that individuals or families can take out on their own. And, uh, and then we would have a, um, an annual, we, we would conduct an annual safety inspection. We could, you know, we'd be happy to to actually, even though the Coast Guard isn't does not have jurisdiction, um, we uh, we may end up working with them to just do a, an annual inspection. But we'll keep up to date on all of the requirements that would be required of an open ocean vessel, even though this is in a protected 52 acre lagoon. So that's that is um, that's the the plan at this point. It's an unusual circumstance, of course, because. There are not a lot of large privately owned bodies of water um, in the state of Hawaii like this, so we're we're feeling our way through some of these um, some of these jurisdictional um, questions. However, when it comes to uh, safety of our, of our patrons and operation of the facilities, um, we take that uh, very seriously. And of course, that that has a lot to do with with um, our own liability. So um, we we uh, we plan to to um, have a very rigorous program in regard to that. Yeah, that's helpful. Um, Mr. Hu, uh, when, what's the timing of these, this operation? I imagine it's not in the near future. No, it's not. Uh, I think Mr. Cassidy would have a better idea of when we plan to start it. Yeah, the plan, the plan opening date is the first quarter of 2023. First quarter of 2023. Yes. Um, here's what I would like. I would like to continue this matter. Hopefully you folks are agreeable. I would like to see the safety plan that Mr. Castor alluded to. And if you could include in the safety plan, the efforts of the applicant to ensure that the operator of the vessel has some, either a certification 
or experience or training, any combination that can assure us that the operation of the vessel will be safe. Two, what sort of safety equipment will be on the vessel, such as light vests and the like. The, the um, intent in terms of doing annual or uh, regular inspections. I don't think the Coast Guard necessarily would voluntarily inspect the vessel given it doesn't have jurisdiction, but I don't know that for a fact. So in, in the event you folks reach out to the Coast Guard, they do not provide voluntary inspections. If you could come back with some other alternative, I'm not sure what that might be, um, but something to assure us that the vessel itself would it's remain seaworthy. seaworthy, yeah. So those, those are the concerns I have and any other um, questions or concerns the commissioners might have. Yeah, I would just like to, you know, I, um, so I'm, I'm looking at this, this is a relatively small boat, 12 people max. Max. That includes the captain? Yes. And any other staff or personnel? We want to be the captain. Well, I mean, if I mean, you're, for, if you're intending to serve alcohol, you know, you're going to have somebody that's my other question. Where is the alcohol going to be stored? What kind of alcohol are you going to you plan on serving? Who's going to be serving it? You know, if you got one person captaining the boat, it's kind of hard to also serve alcohol and monitor people's conduct and consumption. So, you know, that's my concern. Also, you know, I question kind of the necessity or the, <laughs> that, you know, for us, a small boat like this, you know, how many people you think you're going to have every day um, versus the type of oversight and um, additional responsibilities if this is, if we do, you know, end up um, granting this license. So, but, you know, we do have other boats such as the catamarans in Waikiki um, that are larger, but, you know, similar capacity. Um, and they're out on the open ocean. So I don't see why this would be prohibited. Right. Those are allowed. Right. Um, but I would like to know, you know, I would also like to continue it and just get a better idea of, you know, the, the, the flow of service, basically. How are you folks, what kind of drinks are you gonna be serving? Who's gonna be serving the drinks? How are um, the, the ages of the um, customers going to be verified? Who's gonna be doing that, you know? Um, that, that kind of stuff. I know with the catamaran, usually you have to make reservations ahead of time. You know, and in that process, they ask you how old you are, date of birth, all of that. Um, so just something like that, Mr. Sure. And we can address that as part of the safety evaluation system. Yeah, I, I agree with my fellow commissioners, particularly given the unique circumstances of this matter. And also due to the fact that we have some time before operations commence, we should use that time effectively and get a, a, a better handle of what we'll be doing. Here. What's your pleasure in terms to, of uh, to set date or? What's your pleasure in terms of timing? <clears throat> um, yes, sir. But two months. Yeah, I think we could we could easily put this plan together within thirty days. So anytime you know after after a month is fine with me. Okay. Whatever time period you are you saying after a month. Oh, it is one month. Okay. Motion to continue application number 22 24144 for at least one month on the next available hearing date. Second. The move and second to continue agenda item six application number 22 24144 for one month or next available. I also vote aye. Motion is carried. Uh, application is continued. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you commissioners. Thank you. All right. Moving into requests, calling agenda item number seven, request number 23-00204 from IQ Factory LLC, DBA La Cucina. Hi, my name is Don Trong. Hi there, my name is Don Trong. I'm the owner member of La Cucina. What's the reason for the request? Um, I know um, 
we have this matter uh, numerous time that occur for me. Um, my basically request is to um, is give me uh, um, some time to renew my liquor license due to my accountant couldn't file for the renewal of, I mean, for my tax. Um, unfortunately, um, he was out of the hospital about a week ago. Um, he just completed the tax form uh, today. And he asked me if I can uh, walk it in um, on Monday to have it uh, submitted to get a tax clearance. Um, he did electronically submit the federal, but he was unable to submit the state. So I do apologize for um, on on this matter. Thank you. Uh, motion to approve request number 23-00204. Second. Yeah, motion seconded to approve request number 23-00204. Any objections or reservations? Hearing none, I also vote aye. Motion is carried, request is approved. Thank you. Thank you so much, Your Honor. Calling agenda item number eight, request number 23-00325 from Bloomingdale's Inc. DBA 40 carats. Thank you, Mr. Madam Hu again. Chair, Commission members, Kenneth Hu appearing for the applicant. Uh, we are we have two requests. One is to, to, to be able to renew the liquor license for fiscal year 22-23. And I believe when we came here last week, uh, we explained our situation. But we're back here because we also want to get approval to use some of the documents of the converted entity. Um, Brian, can we approve both requests just by approving their agenda item? Or do we need to be more specific? I believe you can uh, cover both with one motion as long as you identify the request because it's the request as amended. Okay. And to approve <laughs> amended request number 23-00325. Second. The move and second to approve the amended request number 23-00325. Any objections or reservations? Hearing none, I also vote aye. Motion is carried. Request is granted. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We've already gone through with agenda item number nine, moving on to other business, calling agenda item number 10, request number 23-00352 from Clifford Manansala. Did I say that correctly? Yes, okay. I, I hear it off all the time. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Michael Bangla. I'm the founder of the Stack Foundation. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm with Cliff to, uh, uh, to request a waiver of Rule 3 82 32.31. Uh, our event will last 22 days. Uh, uh, we have 22 days of event over a 45 day period. What kind of event is this? It's the Stonewall Land Christmas Light Show at Aloha Stadium. This is our third annual. Okay. It's going to be very casual. It's no heavy drinking. It's just for whoever's a designated driver to have a drink or two while they're eating dinner or while their kids are playing within the show. It's a little different than last year where it was just drive through. Now it's drive through and walk through to two different total sections. The one we are referring to for the liquor license is for the walk through section. Public just a point of clarification, your request uh, lists a total of 21 days, but I thought I just heard you say 22 days. Uh, I added on Thursday before I put Cliff on one of them, just in case. Right now, we only got 20 days scheduled, but we could open on Thursdays. So when we do put in our application upon this waiver, we intend to add on Thursdays. So right now we have November 25th, 26th, 27th, December 1st, 2nd, 3rd, and 4th, 8th through 11th, and the 15th through the 25th. And that'll be a total of 22 days that we'll be requesting. Excuse the error on our mission. 
It is not uh, designated on the agenda as 21 or 22. So the commission uh, wishes to take action on the uh, request as amended. I, I, I don't think that's a problem. Okay. We just include it in your, uh, your approval language. Thank you, Ms. Hart. Thank you. Um, motion to approve request number 23-00252 as amended to include 22 days for the special event. Second. I move them second to approve the re amended request number 23 00352 for 22 days. Uh, any objections or reservations? Hearing none, I also vote aye. Motion mm -hmm. is carried. Request is granted. Thank you. Good luck Thank on you your guys. events. Thanks a lot. Coming okay. agenda item 11, request number 23 00377 from Kikuchi. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the Commission. Please be issued from Ching Thought Inc. This request uh, waiver uh, the temporary license application rule. This used to be the old Happy Lamb Hot Pot, which I think closed in 2020. Um, you go farther back than that, as, you, as I indicated in my letters, it used to be the site of VNO trading and before that, uh, Dominic Jocelyn's physical tech. So it's, it's had a license for a while. As the commission knows, um, that second floor is almost barren. Um, one of my clients, Bert Kawasaki, is up there doing, doing that, uh, his special events. That's on um, the other side of That's the old Ryan's place, right. Okay, and then there, that's the, this hot pot thing. Right, okay. and, and I don't think anybody's gonna go into the Mexico Mexico Lindo space, but that space has some issues with plumbing. So, um, so this would be one of two restaurants up there. Approve okay. request number 23-00377. I move them second to approve request number 23-00377. Any objections or reservations? Hearing none, I also vote aye. Motion is carried. Request is approved. Thank you, Mr. Kiyuchi. Oh, next one is you too. Yes. All right, calling agenda item number 12, request number 23-00378 from Mr. Keith Kiyuchi. Again, good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the commission. Keith Kiyuchi for PB Restaurant, LLC. I previously got in disapproved for PB Restaurant Corp. And then they changed the end of the yard. So the investigator let me know um, last week that I needed to come back to the commission, get this approved. This is the old Kakako kitchen space. Refresh our memory. When did you get approval for the prior entity? March 25th, 2021. It was a while back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was I was kind of prepared, but not prepared for the switch of the end of the summer. <laughs> Pausing because of the date, the last license yes. expired. Yeah. And I don't want to set bad precedent well, um, going forward. So <laughs> here's here's some additional information. That's when the license expired, but Kakako Kitchen was the last tenant in the space. The way I've always looked at it is, is I've got an intervening tenant and tell a client that they can't take advantage of the space. So that's how I would justify it, despite the date. Kakako Kitchen didn't they renew the license. license. Yeah, yeah, they weren't licensed. Yeah. Okay. So, and I think, I think the, well, let the commission decide, but, you know, I, I, I think there's a huge difference if there's an interview. Space is going to be um, converted, converted or demolished, right? Well, the, the whole, few years. the entire Ward Center is supposed to be demolished by 2024. That's what Wait. I have yeah. heard. Which is what why you're not seeing a whole lot of interest on the second floor, um, but it happens that um, Kevin Kompkowicz that owns the entity is a contractor. But Kevin has the um, El Gallo, the El Gallo Rosad in Kailua. Mm -hmm. But what's even stranger is his head chef is a guy named Paul Bentley, who's Australian, doing Mexican food in Mexico City. So um, 
if you've ever been to El Gallo in, in Kailua. Have, I'm, I'm very it's familiar yeah. with it, but I'm, I'm just wondering if this this is going to be part, if this is going to be demolished in a couple of years, yeah. or if this is going no, to be it's, a it's, permanent it's, establishment. It's going to go in a couple of years. I, I kind of, uh, I've been talking to Howard Hughes because there's the, there's brewing equipment that's landlocked into the old brewing space. Right. So, yeah. And that's right above this space, correct? That's across the street from this space. Yeah. Across that little yes. inside alley. Yes, that in, is correct. In the center itself. That correct? is correct. Yeah. Okay. Hey, um, no, but I'll state for the record that I generally do not want to approve this sort of request for waiver given the time that's elapsed, sure. but also for the record, given the unique circumstances of this request and not to set precedent, my motion is to approve request number 23-00378. Second. Second. Any motion seconded to approve request number 23-00378. Any objections or reservations? Hearing none, I also vote aye. Motion is carried. Request is approved. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Calling agenda item number 13, request number 23 uh, 353 from Wayne Luke Esquire. Yeah. <coughs> to my right is Mr. O Suk Lee, H O space S U K Lee. He is present with Council Wayne Luke. Uh, Mr. Lee is the member for the uh, LLC. We have no changes to this community. Moose has just closed a little over last year in 2021. Did you get an investigator's report? Okay. I don't think there's an investigator's report. It's just a letter. <laughs> That's all this report. Your letter. But you mentioned no changes to the investigator's report. Oh, I'm report. sorry. <laughs> I just thought the like, no changes to my list. Okay, <laughs> it's, fair enough. It's a uh, pilot. Oh, pilot. Too many. Uh, it's been my seventh. Uh, my seventh decade. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Liu. Thank you. Motion to approve request number 23 0 0 3 5 2. Thank you. I move and second it to approve request number 23 0 0 3 5 3. Any objections or reservations? Hearing none, I also vote aye. Motion is carried. Request is approved. Calling agenda item 14, request number 23-00388 from Mr. Wayne Luke Esquire. Mr. Wilson Lee, member is friendly with Council Wayne Luke. Uh, this is the same building, but this is on the first floor. They have two different ones. Okay, thank you. Motion to approve request number 23-00388. Second. The move and second to approve request number 23-00388. Any objections or reservations? Hearing none, I also vote aye. Motion is carried. Request is approved. Thank you, Mr. Lu. Thank you. Motion for the adoption of decision and order agenda items numbers 15 to 20 inclusive. Thank you. The move and second to approve. Uh, for, to approve the adoption of decision and order for agenda items 15 through 20 inclusive. I also vote aye. Motion is carried. Adoption of decision and order is approved. All right. <clears throat> Moving into adjudications. Mr. Jacob. Good afternoon, Commissioner. Daniel Jacob, Deputy Corporation Counsel on behalf of the City and County of Honolulu. Agenda item number 21, to rendezvous. Commissioner, um, this is William Flores, a fellow RES, the owner of Two Rendezvous. Jacob, can you read the charge, please? On or about October 27, 2021, in the city and county of Honolulu, state of Hawaii, licensee employed and or allowed to entertain Kyla at Vinto and Chloe Glenmuth, persons under the age of 18 years of age, in a section of the premise where liquor is sold, served, or consumed without obtaining written permission from the commission for the employment or the entertainment by such minor in violation of rule 3-86-101.53 of the rules of the commission of the city and county of Honolulu. Mr. Flores, how would you like to plead? Guilty, uh, your honor. Motion to accept the plea. 
Second. Been moved and seconded to accept the plea for agenda item 21. Uh, any objections or reservations? Hearing none, I also hold aye. The plea is accepted. Mr. Jacob, what is your recommendation? This is a first time violation. The recommended fine is $500. Mr. Flores, any comment or explanation um, for this charge? Yeah, except for the charges, uh, Your Honor. What kind of assurance can you provide the commission that this violation will not occur again? Yes, Your Honor. Um, I will definitely um, pay close attention to um, whoever is going to be inside the premises and make sure that it's not going to happen again, Your Honor. As well as be uh, cognizant of um, the procedure wherein uh, minors will be at the um, premises. Okay. Um, just please do your best to make sure you're complying with the rules, okay? Yes, Your Honor. Motion to approve the recommended fine of $500 for agenda item 21. Second. Then move and second it to approve the recommended fine of $500 for agenda item 21. Any objections or reservations? Hearing none, I also hold aye. Motion is carried. The recommended fine is approved. Thank you, Mr. Flores. Thank you, Commissioner. Calling agenda item 22, Aloha Beer Company. Mr. Shinsato. Uh, good afternoon, Chair and Commissioners Ross, Shinsato, Authorized Agent, along with Yusuke Ishikawa, uh, men, Member Manager. Jacob, can you read the charge, please? Honor about November 16th, 2021, in the city and county of Honolulu, state of Hawaii, licensee made physical alterations within its licensed premises to wit, alterations to counters in the pizzeria and merchandise room without the prior written approval of the Liquor Commission in violation of Rule 3. 83-62 sub A of the rules of the Liquor Commission of the City and County of Honolulu. Mr. Shinsato, how would your client wish to plead? Uh, we'll plead no contest. Uh, we'd like to give an explanation and ask for a leniency in the uh, penalty phase. Okay, let's take the plea first and we'll, we'll um, move from there. So motion to accept the plea. Second. To move and second to accept the no contest plea for agenda item 22. Any objections or reservations? Hearing none, I also vote aye. The no contest plea is accepted. So Jacob, what's your recommendation? It's a first time violation. Recommended fine is $500. Okay, go to Shinzato. Uh, commissioners, uh, Aloha Beer was unaware of the, that the changes required uh, alteration approval. Uh, as soon as I was notified, we filed a request for alterations and the commission was notified. Uh, Mr. Ishikawa would like to give an explanation of the changes made. Uh, yes, if, if I may, um, I would like to provide some background uh, information on the three alterations, um, I believe, that are identified in the um, investigator's report. Um, the first one being the, um, the counter in the pizza shop. So um, the counter in question um, was never intended to be an expo um, station, um, but ended up um, due to operational reasons, ended up being an operation, um, an expo station where there was a lot of in and out. Um, so this counter had a hinge that um, allowed the counter to be open, um, like from a flat uh, surface to, um, you know, vertically so that people can go in and out. Um, and because of um, that area turning into an expo station, um, the, there was a lot of traffic, in and out traffic, and the hinge broke off. Um, it became a, a safety issue, so um, we left it off, um, not knowing that uh, we had to you know, file the alteration for that. Um, so that was the background um, information on that. Um, I believe the second one was due to um, some shelving that were placed in our merch shop. Um, this was just shelving that was um, mounted to the wall um, and you know we thought this would be something similar to mounting a TV um, or you know even a, a picture frame um, so um, unfortunately for us um, we didn't really uh, we didn't realize that an alteration um, request had to be made for that um, and then third uh, was the addition of uh, sorry not addition but um, replacement of a door um, so there was an existing door frame um, in there. Um, we, we just did not realize that um, 
the actual door itself was was not part of the plan when we filed for the um, expansion of our licensed premises. Um, and so what we did was simply put the door back on, uh, again, not realizing that it was not part of the plan. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to provide that background information for the, the three um, specific violations and uh, also ask for leniency uh, in the fine. For clarification, I thought I heard Mr. Shinsato say that the licensee was unaware of the alterations. Did I hear that correctly? Well, Commissioner, uh, I said the licensee was unaware that they needed approval to make the alterations. Okay, thank you for- We, we don't deny that the alterations were made. Any of these changes change the, the actual foot path of the restaurant? Did it change the square footage at all? No, it did no, not. not. Okay, thank you. And just for clarification, I think I heard you say that for the counters, it was just a matter of a hinge breaking and you not replacing it? Um, yeah, hinge breaking, but it was not repairable because as you can imagine, um, you know, it's wood um, and the hinges were screwed in, um, but due to the, the heavy traffic there, it, the wood actually, kind of, or the, the hinge fell off. So um, we weren't really able to utilize the existing hardware to screw it back in. We would probably would have had to um, probably fix the wood to put the, uh, the door back in. going to be to issue a fine of $250 for agenda item 22. Second. The move and second is to issue a fine of $250 for agenda item 22. Any objections or reservations? Hearing none, I also vote aye. Uh, a fine of $250 will be uh, assessed on the licensee. Thank you, Mr. Shinsato. Thank you, Mr. Ishikawa. Thank, Thank you, you, commissioners. Morning agenda item 23, Dolphins and you. Mr. Newman. Hi, Kaina Newman. I'm general manager for Dolphins and you. Jacob, can you read the charge, please? On or about August 2nd, 2021, in the city and county of Honolulu, state of Hawaii, licensee, a limited liability company, failed to notify the commission in writing of the name, age, and place of a residence of a member or members who have withdrawn and or the name, age, and place of residence of the member or members who have been admitted within 30 days from the date of such admission or withdrawal in violation of section 281-41 sub E of the Hawaii Review Statutes. Mr. Newman, how would you like to plead? Um, guilty, Your Honor, apologies. We updated the DCCA and okay. One second. To notify. Is, um, two things, one, you don't have to cover your honor. Thank you. Um, two, we'll take up the um, plea and then you can provide a comment later, okay? Okay. You can accept the plea. Second. Yeah, guilty. Second, to accept the plea for agenda item 23. Any objections or reservations? Hearing none, I also vote aye. Um, motion is carried, the plea is accepted. So Jacob, what is your recommendation? It's the first time violation, the recommended fee fine is $500. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Newman. Yeah, apologies for that. And I think, unfortunately, it may happen again. We were a small business and uh, during COVID, we uh, changed members. I, I believe me, actually, the general manager took me off. And in 2022, uh, I was put back on as a, a manager for the company and uh, with the DCCA, but not with the Liquor Commission. So apologies. Uh, we will update accordingly and it won't happen again. My motion is going to be to issue a fine of $250 for agenda 23. Second. The motion seconded to approve a fine of $250 for agenda item 23. Any objections or reservations? Hearing none, I also vote my motion is carried. A fine of $250 will be assessed. Thank you, Mr. Newman. Thank you. Calling agenda item 24. Four Seasons Resort, Ko'olina. Mr. Banks. Banks appearing on behalf of Cole LLC. 
uh, the licensee. Uh, also appearing on behalf of Coal LLC is Kesley Huey, the manager, and Joanne Purius, the controller. We waive reading of the charge and plead guilty. Your motion to accept the plea. Second. Moved and seconded to accept the plea for agenda item 24. Uh, any objections or reservations? Hearing none, I also vote aye. The plea is accepted. Mr. Jacob. This violation occurred on July 9, 2021, when the licensee sold liquor on their premises after failing to renew their license. It's the first time violation. The first uh, recommended fine is $500. Okay, Mr. Banks, comments or? Um... Yes, um, earlier, earlier in the year, Coal LLC changed members and notification was given to the Liquor Commission uh, of that occurrence, I believe, in a timely manner. Uh, but then what happened after that, the renewal uh, notifications apparently got sent to the wrong people. Um, a renewal application was submitted late and the hearing on the renewal was not until July 15th. Uh, the inspector, I believe, came in on July 9th and notified management uh, the fact that the license had expired and a new license had not yet been issued. At that point in time, um, the Four Seasons stopped serving liquor for the remainder of the period until the actual renewal. Motion to approve the recommended fine of five hundred dollars for agenda twenty four. Second to approve the recommended fine of five hundred dollars for agenda item twenty four. Any objections or reservations? Hearing none, I also vote aye. Motion is carried. Uh, the recommended fine of five hundred dollars is approved. Thank you, Mr. Banks. Thank you, Mr. Ms. Perius. Thank you. Having agenda item twenty five, Hilton Hawaiian Village. And good afternoon, Commissioners. Avery Matra on behalf of Licensee. With me is Jeffrey Yedlin, the hotel manager, and Nicholas Cabezzo, Director of Food and Beverage. The licensee will waive reading of the charge and enter a plea of no contest with an explanation. Move to accept the plea. Second. I move and second it to accept the no contest plea for agenda item 25. Any objections or reservations? Hearing none, I also vote aye. The motion is carried. No contest plea is approved. Mr. Jacob, what's your record? This violation occurred on April 18, 2021, when the licensee allowed for liquor to be consumed outside the licensed premises, specifically the Beach Cabana area. This is a first violation. The recommended fine is $1,000. Mantra, go ahead. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, as you can see from the attachment three to the investigator's report, this is licensee's first offense of this nature in the 40 years it's had this liquor license. They had signs posted saying that no liquor was allowed past the boundaries of the hotel. What had happened in this case is that a guest purchased beer from a portable bar that was set up while the Hua, um, Hua Tree um, liquor area was closed for repairs. And that guest walked past the signs stating no alcohol past a certain point and brought the beers to the beach. And as soon as the hotel learned about this violation, they immediately closed down this temporary bar and they put up, um, staff was instructed to inform guests that no alcohol was permitted on the beach. Security was instructed to increase the patrols of this area. Mr. Yedlin reached out to Acting Administrator Harai to see what could be done in this instance. And if I could share my screen um, with the commission to show um, signage that was added. The licensee added signage to all of the bar area within their license premises, specifying that drinks must be purchased on the premises, and they cited to the HRS statute. And this provided clarification to their customers that not only this wasn't just a hotel policy that drinks had to be consumed on premises, but this was actually um, required by law. And um, they took all of these steps um, to be proactive to avoid this type of violation from reoccurring. And uh, given all of these steps and these actions, the licensee will ask that um, in lieu of a fine that the commission issue a letter of reprimand. Jacob, any comment to the representations of council? No, I have no comments. Tell me again, what is the recommended fine? It's $1,000. Sure, there's any questions?
So we, we don't have in front of us the reference document to the investigative report. What's the location of the beach cabana to the edge of the licensed premises, roughly? And I, I can defer to um, Mr. Yedlin or Mr. Kabat, so if they can provide clarity on that. Uh, specific to item 25, which was the portable bar, it was probably about 35 feet away from the beach. Um, this was on the main walkway though. So guests purchased a beer and rather than going into the pool right next door or more interior of the property, they took a beeline to the beach and the investigator saw it and um, we're here today. Commissioners, I'll represent the investigative report. Um, indicates that the individual with alcohol walked approximately 50 yards to the beach cabana. Motion to approve the recommended fine of $1,000 for agenda item 25. Second. Move and seconded to approve the recommended fine of $1,000 for agenda item 25. Any objections or reservations? Hearing none, I also vote aye. Motion is carried. Uh, the recommended fine of $1,000 is approved. Calling agenda item 26, Hilton Hawaiian Village again, Ms. Macho. Thank you, Commissioner. Avery Madra appearing on behalf of licensee. With me is Jeffrey Yedlin, hotel manager, and Nicholas Cabezzo, the director of food and beverage. Licensee will waive reading of the charge and plea of no contest with an explanation. Accept the plea. Again. Move and second to accept the no contest plea for agenda item 26. Any objections or reservations? Hearing none, I also vote aye. The no contest plea is accepted. Before you give us recognition, do you want to Yes, please. I'm sorry. <laughs> Come on in. We're very happy to see you. Thank you for hurrying over. Sorry. No further record that Commissioner Hollander is here and he has received all of his homework <laughs> prior to coming. Um, so we'll go back to the agenda item 26. And Mr. Jacob, what's your recommendation? This violation occurred on May 23rd, 2021, when the licensee allowed for liquor to be consumed off the licensed premises to wet Waikiki Beach, approximately 25, side, 25 feet outside the licensed premises. This is also a first time violation. Recommended fine is $1,000. Thank you. Ms. Matra? Thank you, Commissioners. Um, this incident occurred when a guest purchased a Mai Tai from the Hua Chi bar and again walked past signs stating that no alcohol was um, permitted past this premises. And as soon as the licensee heard about this violation, they immediately took proactive steps um, to remedy the situation. If I could share my screen again and show the commissioners exactly what took place. They immediately posted a temporary barrier to prevent people from accessing the beach from um, the tree bar. They additionally posted revised signs along the different beach access points stating that no alcohol beverages were permitted beyond this point and again citing to the specific HRS section so that um, guests would understand that this was not simply hotel policy, that this was required by law, that they were not permitted to bring alcoholic beverages to the beach. Additionally, they posted explicit signage at the bar stating that no alcohol was permitted um, beyond um, that point and that all alcohol um, must be consumed on premises. Additionally, they added fencing to their pool area to close off all of the entrances except for one to make sure that they um, all multiple egress and ingress points were covered and guests couldn't um, have as many access points to the beach. And additionally, they closed down a walk-up window that was providing alcohol to guests to make sure that guests couldn't walk up to this location and easily access the beach area. and additionally closed all entrances um, to the lagoon area, except for one to again, reduce the ability of guests to be able to access the beach from the licensed premises. In addition to all of these measures, they also um, 
posted permanent security personnel to monitor the guests going to the beach area. And Mr. Yedlin met with um, Chief Investigator Peter Nakagawa to discuss what more the licensee could do in order to prevent these types of violations from occurring, to understand what best practices were, to understand what other hotels in the area were doing, and to um, talk through some of the steps that they had been taking already to, again, make sure that these types of violations do not occur. Um, given all of these measures, the licensee asked that in lieu of a fine, the commission issue a letter of reprimand. One point of clarification, the first image I believe that you um, showed us was a white barrier that was put up after the fact. Was that the location that um, the individual used to access the beach? Um, to be honest, we don't know the exact location for how they exited because we didn't find out about it until the investigators there checked whoever was on the beach and then said they had alcohol coming from that location. And we just got the investigative reports last week. So at the time initially, as you saw in that photo, they're literally on the other end of that barrier is the sidewalk and then you're on beachfront property. So that bar since 1984, it's adjacent. And so we recognize that that probably was the most critical access point that was just too easy. So we immediately put that white barrier up to block people from going while we, you know, talked to the fire marshal about closing off a pool that didn't have barriers or fences. And then when I met with Chief Investigator Nakagawa, at that point, it was determined that we should close that to prevent any access. And that's when you see on a future picture on the attachment, that green fence gate that's permanently installed. Ms. Macho and gentlemen, I, I do appreciate the post citation efforts to try to prevent this from happening again, but my concern is that I did not hear anything that was done before this particular violation, even though it's considered a first, it is just a few months after the prior citations. Um, can you yeah. share anything that was done before this citation was issued in particular to monitor people, not just signs, because my best guess is people visiting are not gonna read all the signs and do as they please. Yes, Commissioner, uh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Avery, after you. Uh, no, I, I, I was just gonna um, state, and you could probably provide more elaboration, that after the incident that occurred on April 18th, um, the licensee did instruct their security personnel to monitor these areas to make sure that guests weren't um, bringing alcohol to that beach area. And as Mr. Yedlin pointed out, that when these when they were informed that these incidents occurred, they weren't aware of the specifics that were included in the investigators report. They were just simply informed that a violation had occurred um, at this particular area. And so they were in good faith taking their um, taking proactive steps that they could to ensure that these violations did not happen again. I mean, again, this is the first violation that this hotel has had of this type in the 40 years that it's had its liquor license. They um, had posted signs saying that there were no alcoholic beverages permitted beyond this area. And to their knowledge, that was sufficient to provide guests um, with enough notice that they were not allowed to bring alcoholic beverages to the beach. Um, if I may add to that, just to your question, after the first incident, we didn't have any other bars open. This was just after COVID. The hotel opened a couple months ago. First food and beverage outlets on property were just reopening in those two month period. Uh, but we did do a staff training where all the staff signed off on policies, whether they were beverage servers at the time or bartenders, saying they're cognizant of the fact that alcohol can't go to the beach. And part of those postings you saw in the pictures about signage at the bar saying that they were notifying guests at the point of transactions. The second time when this happened with a permanent bar facility is when I again reached out to the commission and walked with the chief inspector and looked at it. And he said, on the basis of having security at your main point to the beach, you're training the staff. The best other thing I can think of is the barrier. And then he cited for me some experiences that happened at the Sheridan at some time ago. Uh, the beverages that you folks are serving at the pool bar or near the beach, um, are they in plastic containers or are they in glass or bottle containers? It's plastic. 
They're plastic. Okay. Yeah, um, I mean, yeah. technically plastic. It's a compostable sugar cane product, but looks like plastic. Yeah, well, yeah, like a, if so, or a plastic yeah. bag. Um, mm -hmm. In the photos, I didn't see very many trash cans. And so that is my suggestion putting trash cans next to the signs. People tend okay. to be lazy. And if they're halfway done with the drink and the trash can is 50 feet away, they're probably going to take it with them. So especially on vacation. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I'll <laughs> so have those out tomorrow. <laughs> putting more trash cans, putting, making it easily easy for people to dispose of their beverage before they get to the beach. My pleasure. Be done tomorrow. Is going to be to approve the recommended fine of one thousand dollars for the Second. Then moving second to approve the recommended fine of one thousand dollars for agenda item twenty six. Uh, any objections or reservations? Hearing none, I also vote aye. Motion is carried. Uh, one thousand dollar fine is approved. Calling agenda item twenty seven, Hilton Hawaiian Village again, Miss Macho. Thank you, Chair. Avery Matra on behalf of licensee with me is Jeffrey Yedden, hotel manager, and Nicholas Kovitz, of, um, director of food and beverage. Licensee waives reading of the charge will enter a plea of no contest with an explanation. Motion to accept the plea. Second. I move and second it to accept the no contest plea for agenda item 27. Any objections or reservations? Hearing none, I also vote aye. Motion is carried. Uh, no contest plea is accepted. Jacob, what's your recommendation? This violation occurred on September 10th. 2021 when the licensee violated the mayor's COVID order by permitting employees and customers to not wear face masks, by not maintaining social distancing, and failing to produce contact tracing lines. It's a first-time violation. The recommended fine is $500. Thank you, Chair. And again, licensee took the COVID orders very seriously and prior to this incident had actually reached out to um, discuss with the mayor's office, COVID response, the liquor, liquor commission, as well as the Department of Health to see how they could best operate this bar, which is located outdoors. And uh, unfortunately, with regards to the masking requirement and the contact tracing requirement, they received some conflicting information as to what was actually required under the orders for a bar that was located outdoors. And they understand now that that was um, a violation, but at the time they were um, complying in good faith with what they thought the order required. And again, with regard to the intermingling licensee understands that this was a violation and they understand that on this date, there was simply an, an influx of guests um, at the last minute um, at the bar area right before, prior to closing that they did again take all good faith efforts to make sure that um, guests were not intermingling, that they um, were seated with their party and they um, implemented those so that the best they can at this point in time. There was simply an, an influx at the last minute right before closing and again licensee doesn't dispute that that's a violation and understands what took place. Um, given the facts that they were complying in good faith with the orders, the licensee will request that a letter of reprimand be issued in lieu of a fine. Describe the, you mentioned outdoor bar. I'm not familiar with it. Can you describe the, the inner structure or why you call it outdoors? Yeah, I mean, for the purposes of description, this is in the center of our property, just northeast or Mauka of our front desk lobby. There, there's the next structure above it, six floors up, which is the top of tower, and it's attached to the top of pool. So for lack of a better reference, it's a pool bar, completely outdoors, airborne. So where the discussion is of conflicting information, in summertime, we reached out to the several groups, whether it was Sam Moku of the mayor's office, whether it's COVID response, and they said employees and people outdoors didn't need masks which at the time of citation, they said we did. We changed the policy the next day, well, two days later, because we had to close the bar on that Saturday after this happened. Um, contact tracing, how we read the orders, it said for dining indoors, and this venue strictly outdoors. So when they clarified saying, no, you must have contact tracing at this venue, we immediately started it up two days later as well. The intermingling, I can't speak to other than saying that our cameras at 845 showed a very empty bar and around nine ish people started crowding the bar takes last call at 930 because under the orders, we had the close at 10 and um, again we're here today. 
Jacob, any comment to the representations? No, I, I, I believe all the representations are correct and pictures in the investigative report do appear to confirm the description of the facility. Thank you. Motion to issue a letter of reprimand for agenda 27. Okay. <clears throat> I move and second it to um, issue a letter of reprimand for agenda item 27. Any objections or reservations? Hearing none, I also vote aye. Motion is carried. A letter of reprimand will be issued. Calling agenda item 28, Northern Hawaiian Village. Ms. Macho again, please. Good afternoon, commissioners. Avery Matra on behalf of Licensee. With me is Jeffrey Yedlin, hotel manager, and Escovetso, director of food and beverage. Licensee will waive reading of the charge, enter a plea of no contest with an explanation. Accept the plea. Thank you. Then moved and seconded to accept the no contest plea for agenda item 28. Any objections or reservations? Hearing none, I also vote aye. The no contest plea is accepted. Mr. Jacob, what's your recommendation? This violation occurred on November 9th, 2021, when the licensee permitted liquor to be consumed off the licensed premises, uh, specifically on Waikiki Beach, 10 yards outside the licensed premises. This is a first time violation. The recommended fine is $1,000. Thank you, Ms. Matro. And thank you, commissioners. In this instance, um, what had happened was that a guest purchased a drink from the um, Hawaii Tree Bar and actually went through an employee access only gate. So as you saw from our um, previous hearing, the licensee had taken steps to put up permanent barriers, preventing guests from accessing the beach from this bar area. And what had happened was that this guest um, went through an, an access point that if I, again, may share my screen to give the commission um, a better understanding of what happened, the guests actually entered through this gate where it's signage says that guests are not permitted to use this, that this is a emergency employee access only um, egress and ingress point. And so uh, given as soon as the licensee found out about this violation, they um, told security to monitor this area specifically, again, very carefully because um, guests were now going through areas that they were not permitted to go through. And uh, given that, um, commissioners, the licensee will ask that in lieu of a fine, a letter of recommend will be issued, where in this case, they had put up all of the barriers, had only allowed, allowed guests to enter um, this area through one egress and um, ingress point, and the guests um, kind of impermissibly went through um, a gate that was meant only for employees. For a question for either the GM or the food and beverage manager. Um, since the November 2021 citation, have you folks been, whether it's your security, your other employees, have you folks been able to deter similar violations? We're deterring a lot. We have a permanent posted position that's where those first two incidents occurred because that's where a bulk of the visiting guests are walking to the beach. This is the backside by Rainbow Tower, and it's strictly an emergency exit that the staff use. Unfortunately, the fire marshal requires us to have two points of entry and egress in that pool. So one area is wide open because that's where guests enter and exit and get their towels. We had to have a second one, so we put the fence up with emergency exit verbiage and stuff. And unfortunately, in this case, somebody was uh, intent on going to the beach, and so they chose to go out through a fire exit corridor to do that. So now we have a second person who's roving the Rainbow Tower that keeps an eye on that area. Uh, so to my knowledge, we haven't had repeat issues since. It's been nine months. Um, I don't want to jinx myself, but we're, we're trying to make sure our guests behave in the manner they need to, and hopefully it continues that way. Thanks, folks. Either we don't want to see you on this side of the calendar. <laughs> yeah, I, I prefer our meetings when it's for positive permits, not for these fun discussions. Sorry to tie you up for half the agenda today. The motion is going to be to approve the recommended fine of one thousand dollars for agenda twenty-eight, but the commission is going to suspend collection of that fine for a period of one year as long as a similar violation does not occur. If a similar violation does occur then this fine will become due and owing along with any other fines the commission assesses. Second. And seconded uh, to approve the recommended fine of $1,000.
However, um, we will suspend collection of that $1,000 uh, provided that a similar violation does not occur in a one year period. Any objections or reservations? Hearing none, I also vote by uh, motion is carried. Thank you, Ms. Matro. Thank you very much, Commissioners. Okay, do you want to pick up number three, please? Yes, I do. Uh, do you, I'm sorry, Mr. Jacob, do you mind if we move back to our regular agenda? No, I do not. I'll be calling agenda item number three, application number 22-24448 from the Cafe Finn LLC DBA Rock and Rolls. And Madam Chair, as previously stated, I must refuse myself due to a potential conflict of interest. Thank you, Commissioner Buckley. So noted for the record. Good afternoon, Commission. My name is Zachary Diano, appearing as attorney and authorized agent for Lake Cafe Finn LLC, doing business as Rock and Rolls. I have um, the owner and member, Mr. Frank uh, Nguyen, appearing via Zoom with me as well. Good afternoon. My name is Han Hong Wing. I'm the owner of Le Café Fin, TBA Group and Rolls. Commissioner, do you have any questions or type of action for the applicant? Um, I don't have questions, but thank you for your patience, gentlemen. Of course. Um, I don't have any questions either, and thank you your patience on um, a little bit of traffic coming into town that was not expected. Um, my motion will be um, to approve application number 22 24448. Second. Moved and seconded to approve application number 22 24448. Any objections or reservations? Hearing none, I also vote aye. Motion is carried. Application is approved. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much, Commission. Thank you, Judge. We're moving um, back into the adjudication, calling agenda item number 29, Kalihi Station. Mr. Good afternoon. Oh, thank you, Chair. Good, good afternoon, Chair, members of the Commission, Greg Nishioka authorization appearing. Also to my left is the President Oak. That's okay, yo, quack, K W A K. We waive reading of the violation and enter a plea of no contest. Motion to accept the plea. Second. The move and second is to accept the no contest plea for agenda item 29. Any objection, objections or reservations? Hearing none, I also vote aye. Motion is carried. No contest plea is accepted. Mr. Jacob, what's your recommendation? This violation occurred on September 24th, 2021, when the licensee failed to have adequate time cards for their employees. This is licensee's third violation. The recommended fine is $750. First violation occurred on January 25th, 2019, where the licensee paid $250. The second violation occurred on February 17th, 2019, where the licensee paid $350. Thank you, Chair. I mean, I'm sorry. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, would just ask uh, that the uh, couple of things that the commission consider. The first two violations which occurred in 2019, I believe January and February respectively, happened before the present owner took over the establishment. Um, she took over in this October of 2019. So we kind of, we'd ask that the con uh, commission consider this to be a first violation. Um, the employee in question has been terminated. And I, in talking with uh, Ms. Kwak here, uh, prior to this, I, she has instituted a policy where employees are not allowed back on premises uh, if they're not working. The, the situation happened where this employee was off duty. She was on premises. She, she went to help Ms. Kwok. And when the investigators saw her helping her, um, she was cited and she had not clocked in uh, as required. Therefore, we had asked that uh, the commission considers to be a first violation. And it was, I believe, a fine of $250. Okay, could you confirm the fine for a first violation would be $250? Yes, yeah, so the first time violation for this would be $250. Thank you. Thank you. Motion is going to be to approve the recommended fine of $750 for agenda item. The move and second is to approve the recommended fine of $750 for agenda item 29. Any objections or reservations? Hearing none, I also vote aye. Motion is carried. Uh, the fine is approved. 
Thank you, Mr. Nishioka. Thank you, Chair, members of the Commission. Have a good evening. Calling agenda item 30, Bakery and Table Hawaii, Ms. Melcher. Good afternoon, Chair, Commissioners Robin Melcher on behalf of the licensee, and with me via Zoom is Prasant Haki. We waive public reading of the charge in the plea of no contest with explanation. The move and second to accept the no contest made for agenda item 30. Any objections or reservations? Hearing none, I also vote aye. No contest fee is accepted. Mr. Jacob? This violation occurred on or about October 1st, 2021, when the licensee transferred the license to another individual without commission approval. First, it's a first time violation. The recommended fine is $500. Thank you for the hearing at the transfer of the liquor license. Mr. Kurataki, he purchased the real property and the building and not the restaurant in him. So upon completion of the sale of the real property, the seller, Advanced Fresh Concepts, offered to give the liquor license to Mr. Kurataki. Um, the purchase of the land, which was substantial, was not contingent on the transfer of the liquor license. He was not purchasing it for the business or the liquor license, purchasing the real property. So at, um, the transfer application was submitted shortly thereafter the property closed on the sale. And at no time did Mr. Kurataki operate the premises under the seller's liquor license, which was placed into safekeeping. So therefore we're requesting that um, they be issued a letter of reprimand because it was not their intent to take over the business. He was really purchasing the real property and the seller gave the license to them since they purchased the property. Question? To issue a letter of reprimand for agenda item. Second. The move and second is to issue a letter of reprimand for agenda item 30. Any objections or reservations? Hearing none, I also vote aye. Motion is carried. A letter of reprimand will be issued. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Agenda item 31, West Side Bar and Grill, Kapolei. Uh, commissioners, I have the chance to speak to the licensee's attorney, Neil, Neil Goto. Um, he's asked for a continuance to the next available. I apologize. I do not have a date for the next available, but I would ask on behalf of Neil Goto that this be continued until such time. Um, sorry, let's continue agenda 31 to the next available hearing date. Thank you. Got it. Calling agenda item 32, Yakini Cook Korea House. Hello, Mr. Lee. I don't know if somebody decided to come. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Parker was fumbling. <laughs> it's okay. It's all nice to see you. Same here. Uh, that's why I came in first. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Uh, James Lee representing Korea uh, One Inc., DBA Yakini for Korea House. Seated to my right is uh, Mr. Jung Ho Park, manager, also the husband of the owner. Uh, J O N G. H O, last name P A R K. We'll uh, waive the uh, reading of the charges. Are you free? No. Motion accept the plea. Second. The move and second is to accept the no contest plea for agenda item 32. Any objections or reservations? Hearing none, I also vote aye. The no contest plea is accepted. Mr. Jacob, what's your recommendation? This violation occurred on September 22nd, 2021, when the licensee failed to have a duly registered manager on the licensed premises. This is licensee's first violation. The recommended fine is $500. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, uh, it was during COVID period when people were quitting work left and right. And they were very short-handed. And the, uh, the, uh, they had three or four managers who were certified with the credentials, but then some of them quit. Now they have up to five just to cover all the bases, to make cover all the ships. So, uh, I don't think it will ever happen again, but uh, uh, you know, with a reservation anyway, I'd like to request a uh, little reprimand if possible, please. Mr. Jacob, any comments or representations? I uh, know. Um, this is gonna be an issue fine of $250 for agenda item 32. Second. Then move and second it to approve a fine of $250 for agenda item 32. Any objections or reservations? Hearing none, I also vote aye. A fine of $250 will be assessed. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Park. Same to you, Mr. Park. Um, moving on to other business, calling agenda item 33, liquor administrator, Ms. Harai. 
I don't have anything in addition to uh, information I circulated earlier today. Thank you. Uh, seeing no other matters on the agenda, I'm sorry, Thank you, Mr. Gibson.